register now. Hello, my dear children. Namaste and welcome to the very first Bio Bites in 15 minutes session for CBSE class 9 children. Yes, as promised, we are here exclusively with a video for you as well, my dear CBSE 9 children. So we are going to be talking about the eukaryotic cell structure. And this is Ambika, your biology master teacher, right here at Vedantu. Right, guys, let's get started. This is very important as far as your chapter, the fundamental unit of life is concerned. Well, that chapter is all about the cell, right? So let's have a very quick overview of the eukaryotic cell structure. Now, do remember, do good and good will definitely come to you, okay? Let us not think of any barriers uh, when, when it comes to doing good uh, to ourselves or to others okay because definitely it will come back to you as well um, now children one more thing before we move on let me also remind you to um, visit the link in the description box below and the pinned comment so that you can check out all the details that you would find very very relevant to you as far as your exam preparation and everything is concerned because all the details of Vedantu Pro subscription are given there. And remember to also apply the coupon code AMBPRO to avail the best benefits out there. Okay, so let's move on to the eukaryotic cell. Now, what exactly is a eukaryote? Now, organisms may either be prokaryotes or eukaryotes, right? We know that. Now, prokaryotes are said to be more primitive, like the bacteria and all of that, whereas eukaryotes are said to be more advanced. Okay, uh, but then... It's a misconception if we said that uh, eukaryotes cannot be unicellular. No, even amoeba, which is unicellular, is an example of a eukaryote. We, such complex multicellular organisms, we are also eukaryotes. So the simplest definition for a eukaryote is an organism whose cells or cell has or have a nucleus enclosed within a nuclear envelope. As far as the cell of the organism or the cells of the organism um, has a proper nuclear envelope protecting it and it's got like proper cell organelles, well-developed organelles within it, we can call it a eukaryote. Now children do remember, today we are not here to discuss this chapter in one shot. One shot series is going to be a different thing but then this is going to be only an overview of the eukaryotic cell. The most detailed explanation is given in the respective sessions which we have already done, you can check out that in the playlist, okay? So don't forget that. Now let us start with the cell membrane. Now children, if you remember when I taught you the structure of the cell, I told you that it's very, very um, important to remember the functions of each of these, the structure and functions of each of these cell parts, right? And the best way to do that is by thinking of some suitable analogy. And I remember in our uh, classes when we discussed this a, a couple of months ago, um, we compared the cell to a factory. And that is one of the, not just in our sessions, I think it's one of the most uh, preferred analogies for the cell around the world by many teachers and students. It's very, very easy to assign a role to each part of the cell to something that's part of a factory, something like that. Okay, so cell membrane. Okay, do remember the cell membrane is said to be the outermost as far as animals are concerned, animal cells are concerned. But as far as plant cells are concerned, these lie just inner to the cell wall. So there would be a cell wall in the case of plant cells and the cell membrane would be just within it. Okay, so cell wall outside and cell membrane inside. But as far as animal cells are concerned, it's going to be an outer cell wall only, just this. That's it. Um, and it's a very, very thin, flexible and a living membrane. Um, and it possesses fine pores so that certain particles can pass in and out of the cell. Um, and we call it semi-permeable. Very, very, very important. Because it doesn't allow anything and everything to pass through it. Only certain selected substances to pass through it. Okay. And then it's made up of biochemically, it's made up of what we call lipoproteins a bit of a combination of lipids and proteins okay there are a few carbohydrates as well but then mainly it is lipoproteins that biochemically make up most of the cell membrane okay so what does it do 
Now, um, as far as the role is concerned in the factory, if you think of a eukaryotic cell as a factory, you can think about the cell membrane as the main doorkeeper or the main door. Like there is an outside gate uh, that is different, but then everyone will have to go through a door where some kind of screening would happen, right? Or in shopping malls, some kind of screening would happen. Like you will have to pass in your baggage uh, through a uh, some kind of a place. Like if it's a very very strict uh, mall or a factory, um, some kind of checking happens certain people would be allowed to enter certain people wouldn't be allowed to enter likewise exit also is restricted right so cell membrane can be compared to that selectively permeable security guard so it separates the contents of the cell from its surroundings very very important right then it regulates the entry of certain solutes and ions of course and thirdly it maintains the shape of the cell but this is true especially with regard to animal cells as far as plant cells are concerned the cell wall is always there to take care of the shape maintenance so this is about the cell membrane and this is what the cell membrane in a zoomed in version looks like okay it's a double layered membrane in most eukaryotic cells this is the cell membrane and we also call it the plasma membrane okay yes the same thing and now coming to the cell wall now cell membrane is found in all cells all eukaryotic cells okay uh, whereas the cell wall is found only in plant cells as you see here or it's also found in certain bacteria and fungi and a few other organisms but animals strictly don't have a cell wall so we can compare the cell wall to the outermost gate of a factory or a shopping mall let's keep it factory for now okay the factory is outermost gate wherein anybody can enter and exit there are, there are no proper restrictions that is representing the cell wall and remember a plant cell wall is mainly composed of cellulose very very important and this is freely permeable this is why i said the outermost gate anyone enters and leaves nobody cares right then what are the major functions of course it gives rigidity and shape to the plant cell um, it allows substances in solution to enter and leave the cell without any kind of hindrance and thirdly it does provide a lot of protection for the plant cell why do you think plants have a cell wall whereas animal cells don't uh, the main reason is that plant cells they are stationary and more than being able to move from one place to another which is true in the case of animals plants just have to stay in the same place right from birth until the end of their lives right so they definitely need a lot of supportive tissue in their body cell wall helps provide them with a lot of structural support okay this is why we don't have it whereas plants have it okay now coming to the cytoplasm now we have crossed the main gate of the factory we have crossed the security gate which is the cell membrane so cell wall cell membrane now comes the inner portion of the factory the entire inner portion the matrix as we can call it is called the cytoplasm inside the cell yes so all the parts together inside the plasma membrane excluding the nucleus is what we call the cytoplasm excluding the nucleus okay do remember that because nucleus holds a very special place inside the cell so deserves a vip position okay so all the parts um, inside the plasma membrane excluding the nucleus think of it as a carpet um, a floor carpet which covers the entire internal um, area of the floor of the factory except the nucleus which we will come to later okay now the cytoplasm what is it it contains a mixture of water and soluble inorganic and organic compounds and also various organelles of course organelles all of the organelles we know about lie inside the cytoplasm okay and then coming to the functions of course it acts like the matrix or the pool in which different organelles uh, lie and perform different functions secondly all kinds of a lot of metabolic activities occur in the cytoplasm of a cell and thirdly the medium this also serves to be the medium of the initial steps of respiration cellular respiration especially conversion of glucose to pyruvic acid if you remember um, 
if you have ever heard about this or you uh, can probably check out one of our CBSE class 10 videos wherein we have spoken about respiration wherein uh, there is a step wherein glucose is converted to pyruvic acid okay so if this is the cytoplasm and this is the nucleus it is in the cytoplasm that glucose to pyruvic acid conversion occurs it acts as the first step of cellular respiration okay and um, that's about it i think uh, this also occurs in anaerobic respiration and uh, aerobic respiration so this is about cytoplasm now let us look at the special vip i told you about the nucleus we call it the control center of the cell right we can compare it to the ceo's office okay uh, the main ceo the head of the factory holds a special chamber and has got a special carpet inside his chamber which is what we call nucleoplasm and the membrane which uh, encloses the nucleus is double layered and we call it the nuclear membrane it's got pores to allow substances to enter in and leave the nucleus as and when necessary okay and why is it important it is inside the nucleus that the genetic material in the form of dna is contained very 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 important right okay so obviously functions would be easier to remember it regulates the cell functions because control center of the cell and if the nucleus is removed mostly the cell dies except in the case of rbcs and a few such exceptions wherein um, they the cells perform best when they don't have a nucleus okay there are very few exceptions like that then it also contains chromosomes as i said which are the bearers of genetic information responsible for heredity right so this is all about the nucleus which is the ceo's office do remember that now endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum is something that lies just outside to the ceo's office somewhere like this okay the end this is the ceo's office and the personal assistant or the personal secretary to the ceo lies uh, or sits on a table just outside the ceo's office okay that is the endoplasmic reticulum which we call er okay so uh, do remember this and um, one important thing to remember is its function there are two major types of uh, er we call it ser or smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rer or rough endoplasmic reticulum um, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for lipid synthesis okay yes fats or lipid synthesis for ser smooth lipids oil and lipids are all generally smooth right think of it like that then rough endoplasmic reticulum the roughness or the rough structure is because of the presence of ribosomes ribosomes are another cell organelle which may be lying around freely in the cytoplasm or they may be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum okay so those which are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum form what we call RER and hence act as the uh, the synthesis site for proteins. So RER for protein synthesis, SER for lipid synthesis. This is what your endoplasmic reticulum does. Remember the PA or the personal assistant to the CEO. Now comes the mitochondria, the generator room of the factory powerhouse of the cell because this is where most of cellular respiration happens and ultimately energy is released from glucose right so we call it the powerhouse of the cell powerhouse of course all right now coming to the golgi apparatus golgi apparatus again it looks like stacks of flattened membrane sacs consists of structures which we call cisternae and vesicles especially cisternae and vesicles and vacuoles as well uh, now the major function golgi apparatus can be compared to the packaging unit in a factory or in any office that way for that matter the packaging unit wherein they are involved in uh, packing and sending off a lot of synthesized items okay uh, normally exporting them to various destinations uh, within the cell or even out of the cell also sometimes so this is what the golgi apparatus does um, and the functions are all listed here i don't have to read that out to you uh, for example synthesis and secre secretion of enzymes hormones and so on and also as far as the sperm is concerned the male gamete is concerned they are involved in the formation of the portion which is called acrosome okay this is the portion of the sperm which is called the acrosome 
all right yes now coming to the ribosomes i think i've already told you what ribosomes are uh, i mentioned it in endoplasmic reticulum but as i told you they may also be found freely scattered in the cytoplasm so they are the site of protein synthesis let us compare ribosomes to a simple pantry okay a pantry um, in the factory wherein um, there is a coffee vending machine and like basic bread butter and snacks and all of that which are served uh, basic things okay which we can compare to protein the basic things that is what ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis we can compare it to the pantry in our factory now coming to the lysosomes lysosomes perform a very 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 important function which is intracellular digestion okay why is that important well um, they have the ability to destroy foreign substances of course okay and also they can uh, digest the cell itself in which they are present if at all there is some kind of a defect in the cell and as a result we may also call it the suicide bags of a cell okay we can call lysosomes we can compare them to the um, housekeeping staff as well because they are able to eliminate a lot of uh, debris and unwanted waste matter from the cell destroying foreign substances and it also performs a special uh, function when it comes to bone formation which is cartilage digestion okay but then most importantly remember you can compare them to the housekeeping staff helping in keeping the cell clean okay now coming to an overview of the eukaryotic cell here we go remember all eukaryotic cells have three major parts cell membrane the cytoplasm and the nucleus in any eukaryotic cell these would be found okay the nucleus the where is it plasma membrane and the cytoplasm found in all eukaryotic cells all the other parts are what you would find um, in many of them but there are a few exceptions like cell wall is found in only in the case of plant cells or bacteria fungi etc and not in animal cells and um, there may also be a few um, other parts like plastids chloroplasts and all of that which are specific to photosynthesizing organisms like plants once again and peroxisomes and uh, cytoskeleton all of these are additional structures which are there but whatever we have discussed until now children are what we need what you need to know most importantly from an exam perspective okay but then just in case you want to know everything about it take a screenshot of this and keep it in handy so that everything is there for you at a glance so this session in a bite size for you eukaryotic cells have nuclear membrane enclosed in nuclear sorry nuclear material enclosed in nuclear membrane whereas prokaryotes have their nuclear membrane in cytoplasm very important difference the cell wall is not found in an animal cell but are found in plants bacteria and fungi uh, cell wall cell membrane cytoplasm er mitochondria golgi apparatus ribosomes and lysosomes are the various components of a eukaryotic cell children now when you look at this think of it think of the analogies which i have told you see if you are able to relate each of those roles and assign them to each of these parts if you can great okay then these organelles work together to maintain homeostasis a basic uh, a balance of the internal environment is what that means of the body and keeps the organism alive of course all right so that's about a eukaryotic cell structure children if you have found this useful and have enjoyed this please remember to click on the like button right now um well i honestly think even neat aspirants even if you are not from class 9 you will find this very very useful because it's very important as far as neat is also concerned and share it children because this is a literally a bite sized video so do not hesitate to share it with anyone at all and stay subscribed to our channel vedantu 9th and 10th english because just like this we will be coming up with more and more such interesting series in the days to come okay and also do remember to follow me on my official instagram page ambika underscore vedantu okay so i'm sorry i think the scratch came over it ambika underscore vedantu wherein we post a lot of interesting stuff including stress busters like moral stories and all of that Okay so until we meet again uh, do remember to stay home stay safe and stay happy please leave your feedback in the comment section below this is ambika signing off children bye bye